As Russia rolled out technology that renders some of the West's most advanced weapons useless, I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about this. So this is actually leaked documentation coming from the Washington Post, uh, where they obtained classified documents from the Pentagon that actually revealed that Ukraine is reporting that Russian electronic warfare systems have become a lot more sophisticated. That it sounds like the Russians have developed a uh, electronic jammer that creates a cone shooting upward uh, into literally space uh, that jams the ability of weapon systems to talk to GPS. The problem is that the GPS guidance system, right, it, it, because of the, the trajectory that weapons like the HIMARS or Excalibur GPS guided artillery shells, um, they because they move at such a fast velocity, particularly as they close in on their target, that's also when GPS becomes most important, right? GPS is able to give these weapon systems, right? Ballistics alone will get a HIMARS rocket or an artillery shell to, you know, 85% of the accuracy. But that last 15% happens as the round is coming in on the target. It needs to be able to ping the satellite, get a final a ping on its location and make that last adjustment as it's flying through. But because the velocity is so fast that if it loses that connection to that satellite in that crucial moment, it's going to miss its target potentially uh, because it's unable to make those final corrections. So this actually piece of Russian jamming technology, which operates from the ground, projecting a cone of interference into the sky that blocks weapons from communicating to satellites, is going to prevent them from guiding their way to the target, right? And in the case of the Excalibur shells, the weapon lost its potential and effectiveness fell to just 10%, right? The HIMARS system is now completely ineffective, according to one Ukrainian military source, right? It relies on that final GPS walk-in. The Russians' electronic warfare disables satellite signals, rendering the HIMARS worthless. And this is, I think, actually a... Uh, the final iteration of a system Russia was testing for some time. We reported earlier that in eastern Poland, large swaths of the country for a few minutes, I think maybe two hours, um, uh, this was maybe three or four months ago, uh, reported GPS outages, uh, trains, cars, navigation systems, uh, reported that it, the GPS signal either became um, spotty or totally ineffective. And that implied that Russia was experimenting with GPS jamming weapons. And this is a testament, again, to the kind of Russian uh, uh, defense industrial base's ability to innovate in the kind of the Russian way, right? And that while Russia relying on large swaths of low-skill infantry with cheap equipment is a part of the Russian strategy, it doesn't mean that Russia doesn't have technology capable of thwarting uh, a highly sophisticated Western tech. And remember, this is not something likely that... Uh, Russia threw together in the face of uh, the Ukraine conflict, I suspect it's probably technology that, that Russia was trying to develop for a while, and the need to finish the project, so to speak, became really acute in the course of this war. And so this is uh, has caused a little bit of a panic among officials in Kiev, or in the Pentagon, uh, because they need to find a way to counterman this Russian jamming technology, um, which is, again, taken the ability to have GPS guided systems is one of the things that gives Ukraine its largest advantage over Russian technology that doesn't have these kind of ability to deliver precision strikes, right? Russia has the volume advantage. It has a lot more artillery, even with Western aid. But if Western equipment is more precise, more targeted, more effective than it can offset that quantity with quality, right? If you only need one shell to destroy a tank, it doesn't matter that Russia has 10 times as many shells if it requires 10 times as many shells to achieve the same battlefield effect. So countering this jamming technology is a huge issue facing uh, the Pentagon, right? And, and here's the thing. The Pentagon knows that 
this tech is not going to stay inside Russia, right? It knows that China would want this tech. It knows that uh, it, 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 its other allies uh, across the world are going to want this tech. Even potentially, to, uh, it's not clear on how portable the system is. Uh, a version of it might be sent to forces like uh, Iran, which could work its way to Hezbollah, where it could thwart um, you know, Israeli weapon systems. And so this is a really dangerous piece of tech. We also know the U.S. has been explicit that Russia has fielded very um, uh, large space-based satellite killer weapons, meaning that Russia is beginning to create a, a scalable or a multi-layered defense against satellite and GPS technology, right? So you have, of course, their ground-based satellite guidance countermeasures. Then they also have space-based GPS satellite counters. We also heard that Russia has taken out another key Ukrainian space-based system. But before I talk about that, I wanted to say, if you feel like you need to give yourself an edge, you don't need to rely on sketchy Russian radio tech. You just need Strike Gum. 90 milligrams of sugar in every single piece, natural caffeine, uh, 100 milligrams of alpha GPC, uh, zero sugar, available now on Amazon and at strikegum.com. We also have a five pack, right? Uh, if you're interested in trying Strike Gum, but you don't want to order just one pack, uh, you're looking for a five, uh, but you also don't want to buy the 15 pack tray. The five pack is perfect, right? 25 pieces of gum, the equivalent of 25 energy drinks. But unlike an energy drink, it's convenient. Fits in your pocket, your gym bag, your glove box, wherever you think you're gonna need energy. So check us out, strikegum.com or go to Amazon and search Strike Gum. And thanks to the people who have left us the five-star reviews on the uh, five pack, you know that we rely on you guys to tell consumers on Amazon, especially where there's a lot of sketchy products made in China, uh, that strike gums, the real deal. It's made in the USA. Uh, it's made out in Denver with the guys at liquid core. And we use only the highest quality ingredients, including natural caffeine. None of that weird encapsulated stuff, uh, that the other guys use. So thanks again. Okay. The other tech that we've heard that Russia is able to counter, um, is actually Starlink, right? There's there's been news at least well, fairly recently, this is an uh, the same article or this is also from yesterday that Russia has figured out also how to how to block the Starlink signal and this is coming from the New York Times. So, it sounds like there's an increasing sense um in the US that the satellite communications that have been essential to giving Ukraine its battlefield advantage in a lot of ways have become disrupted, right? Members of Ukraine's 92nd Assault Brigade said the Starlink is extremely slow as Russian troops slowed tremendously as Russian troops advanced across the northern border. This could also be part of that same sort of broad spectrum system that we think Russia tested uh, that knocked out uh, GPS in Poland. It could have also been calibrated to knock out Starlink over a large area. One day before the attacks, it just shut down, said a soldier who goes by the call sign Ajax. It became super, super slow. And Ajax said, quote, we're losing the electronic warfare fight. This is uh, interesting because a lot of people uh, were critical of President Trump when he rolled out the Space Force, right? A entire branch of the United States dedicated to winning and dominating in space. And it seemed preposterous, but now we're seeing that these space-based weapon systems are essential to success on the battlefield, right? Between Starlink, which enables Ukrainians from basically anywhere in the battlefield to get high-speed internet, to talk to each other, see each other's drone feeds, and get uh, uh, relay orders um, communicate status, everything, um, being able to thwart that to disrupting the guidance systems of key high-tech weapons, uh, winning in space is essential to winning on the ground. Um, and Ukraine is working with SpaceX to resolve these outages. But again, we know that Elon Musk, head of SpaceX has been weirdly pro-Russian in this fight. Um, right? While it hasn't been perfect, uh, Russia clearly has the technology. When they need it, they can really thwart the Starlink effort, right, by throwing, messing up the latency and the signal. Um, right? He said, actually, a drone pilot said that soldiers were turning to text messaging apps because the Starlink was so slow. Um, and 
it's a real sign that the U.S. does need to and hopefully takes this conflict as a chance to invest in better, more powerful, and effective space-based security systems, right? Again, sci-fi told us that space warfare would be pew, 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 lasers, deflect their shields on, pew, pew. But in the reality is that the pew, pews are just uh, jamming signals. Uh, they're signals going from, the sp from space based satellites to the ground and back. And the war is one of signals warfare, right? Jamming, counter jamming, uh, and, ho and potentially actual satellites hitting each other, taking each other out, blowing each other up, which is dangerous for a whole host of other reasons. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Thanks to the Colonel Tier members. Be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, and like the video. Tell the YouTube algorithm that I make good content and I'm not some unhinged, crazy person. Uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.